UFC Vegas 46 weigh in recap show full card predictions and the betting breakdown really looking forward to looking at each of these matchups after seeing the fighters on the scales smash that like button guys if you're new to the channel subscribe and turn the post notifications on got a fun card we'll be talking about also will be live for this entire card so make sure you tune in to the fight companion on saturday let's get into it and start it off with the first fight of the night late edition bout it's charles rosa tj brown i like charles rosa a lot i like his style he's a boston guy so obviously i am a bit of a fan but looking at this fight against tj brown i feel like rosa is going to be outpaced here and also stamina wise i'm worried that he could potentially fatigue you know taking the fight on just days notice I'm assuming he feels ready to go, but it's different between fight camp ready and I'm in good shape, still training ready. I'm expecting TJ Brown to put a pretty high pace on the striking here, maybe potentially get it to the floor. I don't necessarily see on the ground Charles Rosa having many advantages. Yes, Rosa is a nice Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler. He does have good tools when he gets fights to the mat. But I feel like here against Brown, he's dealing with a guy that I think is faster than him, physically stronger, has a decent wrestling base. I feel like TJ Brown works towards a decision. That's my prediction. If you look at the fighters on the scale, Rosa, I mean, he looks fine. He looks normal, even though he's on short notice. TJ Brown does look very dialed in and ready to go. I feel like TJ Brown's in better shape here. I expect a victory for TJ Brown, probably by a decision. The odds reflect my sentiment here. Huge favorite. TJ Brown, minus 210 at like best value of Rosa, about plus 200 as an underdog. I love Rosa as a dog. I've won with him in the past, but I'm not taking him as an underdog on short notice here taking on tj brown i just don't see a high enough likelihood of that if you look towards some potential bets maybe you want to go fight goes distance minus 195 for that or brown wins by a decision value for that plus 120 i don't love the bet on this one but you could definitely make an argument for throwing down on tj brown especially taking on a guy in charles rosa who's coming in on very short notice and who knows how intense his training really has been he's a longtime vet of the game so i expect him still to be tricky and probably go distance here but i think we're going to see a win for tj downtown brown let's keep on running up the card the next fight of the night brian kelleher kevin kroom another short notice fight kroom absolute savage for stepping in on as short notice as he chose to but we have to talk about something that's i'd say x factor towards kevin kroom natural featherweight kelleher does his best work at bantamweight also size difference 511 to 56 64 inch reach to 73 if kevin kroom can keep this fight on the feet i feel like he's got decent enough takedown defense i could see a world where he wins by upset let's quickly look at the guys on the scales there's kroom he looks ready i did check out some instagram pics and just days before he was saying he wants a fight that would be his christmas gift is him getting a fight and he ends up getting a short notice bout he says he's staying ready all the time i mean he's a longtime vet of the game 21 and 13 i believe record so these guys both been around for a long times there's kelleher and there's the face off not quite maybe you know five six but maybe five seven to, to five ten there's definitely a height difference here i feel like as betting side goes it's hard to not say dog or pass i have this weird feeling that kevin kroom has some potential for an upset here his striking's not bad he puts a high pace early if he's actually in good shape even though very questionable huge question mark he could get it done i have to go with him as a dog i'm loving the plus 200 tag at best value you can find kevin kroom at plus 250 kelleher minus 270 i've been torn on this one Right now, I'm leaning after the weigh-ins to Kevin Kroom for a win by upset on short notice. It's a huge opportunity. Both guys, you know, in the mid-30s range, working towards 35 for Kevin Kroom already there is Brian Kelleher. I'll go Kroom for the upset win I have to pick against Kelleher, but I definitely could see path to victory for Kelleher. Dog or pass style bet, maybe you want to sprinkle it down, but 
not saying bet the house on Kevin Kroom as an underdog by any means here in this matchup. Let's keep running. The next fight of the night, Ramiz Brahimaj versus Court McGee. I love seeing these two go at it. Earlier in the week, the pick is Brahimaj. We'll check them out on the scales and see if something changes. Brahimaj looks fantastic and ready. Court McGee, just the same. And there's the face-off. Slightest of height advantages for Court here. I'll be honest, I think Brahimaj works the grappling game. I'm not confident enough to say, hey, he's going to go out there and get a submission win over Court McGee because it's not like Court McGee's a guy that gets finished. He goes long. He went the distance with Sean Brady. But I could see Brahimaj winning. I'm going to pick him by a decision, though nine of his wins, all nine, wins by submission. That's the method of victory for him is getting fights to the floor, controlling, working towards submissions. I have Brahimaj, Brahimaj over Court McGee here. I'm expecting him to win probably by a decision. Court's going to be scrappy. He's going to bring the heat and he will make it a fight nonetheless here. Odds very close, but favoring Brahimaj now. Earlier in the week, it was actually the other way. Right now, Brahimaj best value around minus 115 range. It says minus 112 here over at Unibet. Plus 110 for Court McGee, best value, but depending where you go, you might find them at Pickham's odds. I like decision win for Brahimaj. I don't really love the prop bet of decision, but we know Brahimaj is a nasty submission specialist. Plus 400, win by submission, might be worth a sprinkle. If he can tap Court McGee, that would be crazy. And I mean, Brahimaj with all nine of his wins by submission, if he's to win this bout, there's definitely a possibility he submits Court McGee. Fun prelim fight here. First card back of the year, and I am stoked to see fights again. Next one, featured prelim, a four-fight prelim. This is a small card. Jamie Pickett takes on Joseph Holmes. Similar size between these two guys, both guys 80-inch reach. Earlier in the week, I was on Jamie Pickett. I really said I want to see the scales. What do we get out of Holmes? There's Joseph Holmes. There's Jamie Pickett. The more physically imposing guy is Jamie Pickett. He's a little bit shorter, but reach being the same, high-level experience being a factor. I feel like Jamie Pickett has a possibility of going out there and winning as an underdog, though I see also path to victory for Joseph Holmes. It is a competitive matchup. It's hard for me to go against the vet here. Also, something you get with Jamie Pickett, tricky southpaw stance. Both guys, rangy strikers, okay in the clinch. Probably things to improve on on either side. Lower end light heavyweight division matchup. I'm going to go Jamie Pickett. I got to go experience as the best teacher. And I think that he beats Joseph Holmes. Look at the age difference too. Seven years Joseph Holmes senior is Jamie Pickett. Looking at the lines. Pickett plus 140. Holmes minus 145. Best value. A lot of people are feeling like this fight might end inside distance. It definitely could. But I don't know why I have this feeling we're going three. Not going to play the props on this one. But. Pick it to win via decision, upwards of plus 290 at best value. I like him as an underdog, plus 140 if you want to play a little down. I do expect over one and a half, even though Jordan Wright stopped him quick. Jordan Wright is a one-minute savage. I mean, you saw what he did to Bruno Silva before getting knocked out. He hurt him. You can do that to anyone. I see why Pickett did get caught and lose that fight. I'm picking Pickett as an upset, win over Joseph Holmes. Maybe the over one and a half would be your best bet playing this fight. Let's jump to the main card. And if you guys haven't yet, smash the hell out of that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on. Keep it locked in here at MMA Experts. We've got tons of content dropping pretty much every day. we got UFC 270 full card predictions dropping on Sunday. I can't wait to get into that. Let's talk about the first fight on the main card. And it's a pretty good one. We have six fights here on the main card, only four in the prelim. So 10 fight card, not huge. Normally UFC, you see upwards of 15, but we got... 10 good scraps to welcome us back to the UFC for 2022. Joe Anderson, Brito, Bill Algeo. Earlier in the week, I said, listen, I'm going dog, but I have to see them on the scales. We're going to look at them now on the scales and see if anything changes. Brito looking shredded, ready to go. He still don't really look 26, man. He looks 30. There's Algeo, lanky, tall. I think it's a fight. I think Anderson is here he could definitely win if he lands that big knockout shot there could be some real damage done to uh bill algeo brito a guy that throws a lot of power in his strikes he also brings a good grappling game algeo on paper has a lot of potential holes in this matchup but he is awkward and he has the higher level of fight experience and also more professional fights overall contender series guys 
sometimes drop that first UFC fight. I got to go, Bill Algeo, win via decision. Upset. The odds aren't crazy. They are sitting at the value of plus 120, and then on the opposite side, minus 130 for Joe Anderson Brito. I'll go the dog. I don't love the prop here for a win by decision for Algeo. Maybe you wanted it. It is plus 290. Brito win inside the distance. If you're on the opposite side, isn't bad. Plus 275. I'm going underdog with Bill Algeo, but there's definitely a path to victory for Joe Anderson Brito. I just think it gets a little bit too chaotic, a little bit too wild. And when you got an awkward guy like Algeo in front of you, he definitely can take advantage of of those moments that will potentially be there. Let's keep on running up this first card of 2022. Dakota Harry Bush versus Vilishlav Boreshev, a.k.a. Slava Claus. I'm on Slava Claus earlier in the week. We'll check them out on the scales, but you know it's hard to uh, change my mind uh, against Slava Claus. Fire nicknames on both sides here. Slava also a little bit taller. Striking differential is wide. Slava needs to improve the grappling a bit, but he's only got six pro bouts. He's training over at Team Alpha Male. I see Slava land in the knockout shot, and I think he sleeps Dakota Bush inside of two rounds and gets his first win in the UFC. He's a contender series guy. He's coming in with some serious heat. There's some contender series dudes on the card, and he's one of them to keep an eye on in the lightweight division. The wrestling is a concern, but I think that comes later. I don't think Dakota Bush's wrestling is enough to seriously threaten uh, Slava Claus in this fight. I think Slava KO, especially with the hooks, especially with Bush's a little bit awkward, wild style. He puts a lot of forward pressure. He'll throw simple techniques consistently, and I think that timing will be there for Slava Claus. Win by KO. Boreshev looking at the lines for this matchup. Boreshev wins KO TKO. Is that's the one worth touching? Maybe plus 130, but you can play Boreshev straight at around minus 175 best value. I like playing money line rather than just hoping for the knockout, but I really expect a knockout win for Slava here. Great fight on the main card, and we get to see a hot prospect on the rise in his UFC debut. Next fight of the night, good women's bout. And I would say title implications, though we have to know both these ladies were beaten clearly by Valentina. Though Jennifer Maya gave Valentina the best fight she's had in a very long time. I feel like Caitlin Chukagan is still a hell matchup for Maya in this rematch, even you know a few years later. How long ago has it been? It's been a little bit over two years, so not that long. Maya's game is essentially the same. She wants some top positional control she's not going to get it with chukagan she's got to find a way inside it's a lot easier said than done getting inside on caitlin chukagan she's 5'9 to 5'4 68 inch reach to 64 and chukagan also has good range management she's not just a lanky tall girl that fights on the inside like fighters that you see sometimes she uses that range she's got a good jab a solid straight she's not easy to deal with in the clinch i think jennifer maya is in trouble here i think she goes out there puts pressure tries to make it a scrap outpointed three rounds of work i have caitlin chukagan win via decision we'll look at the fighters on the scales but i really don't see anything being substantially different with that there's the intense face off between two, these two ladies in the rematch i'm going chukagan stylistically it's a very difficult matchup I like Chukagan to be 2-0 and now over Jennifer Maya. Looking at the lines, not bad. About minus 180 range for Chukagan. Maya, you can find her upwards of plus 170. Maybe you're feeling the prop of Chukagan decision because that's kind of the norm. It's minus 125. They already got you covered, so you ain't going to be throwing a ton at it unless you're, you're supreme confidence on that. I don't want to play it at minus. I want to play it at plus money. So I'll be passing on the prop, but I'll be money lining uh, Caitlin Chukagan on this matchup. And I do think she beats Jennifer Maya for a second time here. Let's get to the featured bout of the night. Rogerio Bonturin, who I need to give a round of applause to. He made weight. He made weight. So I have to give the man some respect. I talked a lot of smack saying he would not make weight. He missed weight up a weight class at 35, but he makes weight at 25. I'm assuming it was just botch weight cuts. Now he's ready to go. Both 29, both prospects slash, I guess, contenders on the rise in this weight class. If Bonturin wins, this is huge. If Royval wins, this is huge. Shared common opponent, Kaikara France, win for Royval, loss for Bonturin, but there's things to take away uh, from both of them. 
I feel like Brandon Royval is more unpredictable than Bontorin. He's the pick earlier in the week. We'll see how they look on the scales here, but we know Bontorin made weight. Look at the slim Bontorin. It's a good look for him, man. He's leaned out. Then on the opposite side, there's the raw dog, Brandon Royval, and you see the size difference. But man, look at the lean Bontorin. I got to show some love to Bontorin coming in a lot leaner. Cardio has been an issue in the past. Is it because he was cutting too much weight or carrying too much body fat trying to cut weight? This is a question. This is Bontorin 2.0. He looks very good. I'm still going to stick with my guns and go with Roy Vall, but I do expect Bontorin to bring the fight. Potential finish for Roy Vall could also see it going three and him getting a decision. Obviously, danger of grappling with Bontorin. He's a very physically strong guy. I feel like on top position, he'll have advantages, though Roy Vall, the slicker and longer grappler. I'll pick Roy Vall for the win. Method of victory earlier on was submission. I could see him hurting Bontorin and choking him out, but I'll be honest, Bontorin looks in incredible shape, the best we've seen. But will he gas faster because he's so lean, because he had such a perfect weight cut? Normally, this guy misses weight. We're going to find out. I'm going Roy Vall for the win still. And the odds for this matchup, minus 160 as Roy Vall, the favorite, plus 155. Bontarin looking towards maybe you want to play Roy Vall inside distance, plus 105. Roy Vall sub, plus 175. I think money line's the way to go on this fight here. And I think that Roy Vall for the victory over Hajirio Bontarin. Let's get to the co-main event which is the heavyweights. I think we're going to see a knockout in this fight. Earlier in the week, the pick is Jay Collier. We'll look at the fighters on the scales. There is Chase Sherman. There is Jay Collier. Face off. Both guys, similar size. A lot more fat in one direction. Collier is accepted. He's a thick boy at heavyweight now. He's not a shredded out 185 or anymore. This guy used to have the, flu the fluid six packs, and he traded that in for eating what he wants. But what does he bring with that former body at 185? He's still got the speed. He still moves fast for a heavyweight. And I think the speed advantage is real here against Sherman, who's hittable. The chin comes up high. There's openings. Jake Collier is going to knock out Chase Sherman. And I think second round, that's going to be my pick here. He's Looking for the KO each and every time, but he hasn't found the chin just yet at heavyweight. I think he finds the chin of Chase Sherman, the former BKFC champion, and knocks him out, getting his first KO win as a heavyweight and getting some momentum on his side. He also should have beat Carlos Felipe in the last one. That was a robbery, man. They, they, they did him wrong in that fight. He, I really believe that he deserved the victory in that matchup. I am going with Jake Collier for the win by KO over Chase Sherman. Value minus 130 Collier on the opposite side, Sherman plus 120 knockout prop. It's probably going to be some pretty solid plus money because Collier not necessarily known for the KO plus 500 worth a sprinkle between these two heavyweights. Fun fight. I'm very excited to see these two go at it here in the heavyweight division. Let's jump to the main event. If you guys haven't smashed the hell out of that like button, if you're new, subscribe, turn those post notifications on so you don't miss a video. Calvin Cater versus Giga Chikadze. Fantastic fight. You got the Boston Savage versus Georgia Zone. The guy on the rise in the featherweight division. The striking prowess belong, beyond what we've seen. Beyond what we've seen. He, he belongs in the upper echelon as far as like best technical strikers in MMA ever. He's a high-level kickboxer that transitioned and he did it smoothly. Granted, there's been hiccups. He's lost two fights as a pro. I remember when he lost to Austin Springer. But he's turned it up since then. On an absolute roll. Been destroying guys as of late and really starting to find his own earlier in the week the pick is giga chikadze let's look how they looked on the scales there's giga there's cater and there's the face off both guys in incredible shape i think both guys are ready for war here and they need to be because calvin cater the boston savage doesn't go down easy we saw what max holloway did to him everything was landing for holloway he did not go down Giga Chikadze brings something different than holloway he's not just a volume striker like max granted max is super quick he's technically he's awesome Giga Chikadze has the knockout ability. He does hit with power. He kicks with power. He's very fast. He moves extremely well. He's going to see knockout opportunities here with Calvin Cater pressing forward. I will tell you this. Calvin Cater's best method to win is grappling. Surprise Giga Chikadze with takedown. Surprise him with pressure against the cage. Tire him out. And if you get a tired Giga Chikadze, you might even get Calvin Cater for the upset knockout. But Calvin Cater... Known in mixed martial arts primarily as a striker, though he does have a good wrestling background. He was a high school wrestler. Doesn't necessarily mix it up for MMA all that much. Both guys 33 also, something to note. So 
realistically, this is their shot, right? They both want to fight for the belt. They both are close to it. Cater with a win probably needs one more. Giga Chukadze with a win is right there, especially with that Jung Volkanovsky fight. If something happens to maybe Jung or even Volkanovsky, I could see interim belt uh, with Chukadze's name on it. Giga Chikadze for the win. I do expect him to pull it off. Knockout. Fourth round. He's going to sleep Calvin Cater. Maybe not unconscious, but potentially TKO with a body kick. I cannot wait for this fight. I'm going Giga for the win. Calvin Cater, Giga Chikadze is a sweet main event. I love this fight, and I'm telling you guys, we're going to see fire action here. Looking at the odds, Giga Chikadze minus 220. Calvin Cater plus 205. Maybe you want to play the knockout prop bet. Giga Chikadze plus 135. Not bad. It's not great anymore. It's better when we talked about it on this week's best MMA bets. But it's still valuable enough here. Overall, I like the card. Coming back with some fire action from top to bottom. I think we got some really potential entertaining scraps. I really don't think there's going to be too many duds on this card. It's definitely one you're going to watch. Make sure to tune into the Fight Companion on Saturday. We'll be talking about this full card live, giving my live commentary, my takes, live betting, the normal flow that we do for the Fight Companions, and we got it for the entire card. We're back with those each and every week. Make sure to tune into that. Smash the like button here. Before I send you off, though, I do have to pull up Best Fight Odds because I want to maybe... Give you a little parlay action. A little parlay action. We're not going crazy with these parlays this week. We're going to give a little little something-something. Bordashev. And of course, for whatever reason, they can't get it right here on best fight odds. They got Giga Chikadze on a future event. I don't understand. Somebody needs to get in there and fix it. Plus 120 if you're going Bordashev versus Giga Chikadze and both guys winning. Actually, not versus, but both guys winning. Giga Chikadze and Bordashev. Maybe you want to add in a little more. You want to go a little nuts. Do you like Jay Collier? Upwards of plus 280 here for that. Be cautious with your parlays, but I do think there's some valuable plays you could potentially make. I also like Chukagan. I'm putting them all together here, but you can mix and match them any which way you like. And if you want a close money play, Brahimaj is another good one. This is a wild man parlay. Five fighters plus 964, depending where you go. It'll be around the plus 900 range. I like it a lot. I think likelihood it comes through. My best advice, if you're betting though, two or three fighter parlays max. And maybe mix it between these guys. I also like Royval though. A little bit more nervous because Bontarin looks so good on the scales and we have to respect his jiu-jitsu prowess. And if he's in shape, he could be a serious problem. Overall, this card has me absolutely stoked. We got action back. You're in the right place to be covering the entire fight game. So smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn those post notifications on. Much love to everybody who continuously supports the channel. I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you all so much, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.